Okay. Um, I do think this needs improving. In a way it has, but in a way it hasn't. With It seemed like, as time went on when I used X, in the beginning there was a pretty good chance you can get X working, but it would happen often enough it, that it wouldn't work That it wouldn't work, and then if you happen to know a few technical commands, you can, you know, if you knew the X configure command there, you can recover. Or if you had another X386 uh, config file, you can move it over from the other partition, put it into um, yours, and then yours would work. It, it, it was like. It didn't work all the time, but when it didn't work, you could eventually get there to where it actually worked. Um, with Xorg, it's like either it, it's going to just work without any configurations or nothing, or you're toast. <laughs> you know, I don't get the feeling like it's in between, but it seems like it just works more often than it doesn't. And I think that if all the all these distributions again, I keep saying this, all the distributions they just put those video drivers in when they do the install, not feel bad about it or guilty or not get hassled by the free software foundation, just let them do it for God's sakes. More of your free software will be used. People will meet the free software foundation, and, and then we wouldn't have these perceived video problems. Because they release drivers for Linux just about when they release the hardware for some of these the three larger, three largest video makers, Intel and ATI, and you know. So why put why put your users through the hassle just because the free software foundation is going to give you crap for it? Well, <laughs> man, <laughs> is a uh, the other guy says, uh, man up and just do it. Damn it, put it in there. Bug regression. Okay, so he says bug regression. Many things used to work correctly on Linux Go, but these days not work at all, such as text to speech, voice recognition, and recording screencast. Now I don't know. He he had a complaint up there about audio, and that seems to be audio related. And I'm just I'm really wondering that he's lost. See what what happens is is that people that make graphical user interfaces have to get those interfaces to to um, interface <laughs> with uh, underlying tools and utilities such as Pulse Audio, such as um, Alza, such as uh, Video for Linux, etc, etc. And let's just say it's not going to be every time that the guy that makes the graphical user interface as soon as some guy in Germany that's making Pulse Audio and releases it and the distribution decides to include it, well the guy that makes GUC Viewer might not even know, he might not even know Pulse Audio exists. Okay, well then it's not good, sound's not going to work in that. Until he finds out about it. People complain, okay, and then he, you know, fixes it, puts it in there. I think maybe that's what's going on in part for, for, for this user's experience, I, 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 I guess. And so my recommendation is if you're using USB at least, it may apply to other devices, try HW colon one comma zero. I mean, that may be the secret password to desktop success in 2010, I don't know. But, um, yeah, these all sound like they're, uh, audio related here in number five so what he means by bug regression <sighs> see I wouldn't really categorize it as bug regression I, I would categorize it as um, uh, if I can think of it uh, the uh, evidence of underlying chaos in the development That I've been, some of these videos I, I've made is were, were aimed at trying to say, hey, think about what you're doing. So, what I would tell the guy that made Pulse Audio is, at the end of the day, make sure that the device you make for audio is 
dev audio. And then he might tell me, well, I can't do that because Alls is using it. And there's your reason. Perhaps, I don't know. Okay, so how do we educate our how do we educate our base that that there's new ways things are happening? And easily, right? Or how do we not do that? Is there, was there any way for Pulse Audio to be incorporated into Alza? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? I don't know the answer to that. I don't even know if the guy that made Pulse Audio has an answer to that. Or the people who made Alza, if they're still together. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. I don't know. Maybe they thought it was a good idea to keep them apart. But some of this fragmentation is just too much. If it's going to, the end result is going to affect bottom line configuration settings and the way they're done there's no reason to split projects up like that that's my opinion, don't do it try to work together but the problem is it might be a social problem and they can't work together at least on that close of a level I, I don't know, I just don't know poor commercial support now I'm, I'm going to say there's a different reason for poor commercial support than his re-referencing to number one. And I would say the reason for poor commercial support is um, the underlying chaos. And I, I, by no means do I consider myself a programmer, but I did work on a project that I pretty much did on my own. Um, in as much as the fact that I took other Unix tools that were available and put them all together with the shell script. Okay. And I know that if I were to download that shell script and I were to, there was no Ubuntu back then. There was Debian. <laughs> right? So my installer is gonna try to install a Debian install that may be two or three versions behind the latest release. For SUSE I had apt-get. They don't do that anymore. And Fedora had apt apt RPM. I maybe Mandrake might still work for what it did is that it, it would um, tell the user what I was going to do check the system to see if these things were installed and they weren't installed then it would download and install those things for them and at the end of the day the screen would pop up and, and then it would look like a network client as best I could, uh, could do but I'm not much of an artist and they could log into their server it even showed the name of their server in the box there uh, I was able to just insert my own graphics into an existing even graphical user interface. I just put everything together. Well that that won't work anymore. It won't work anymore. So, you know, how often you know, Novell isn't that Novell it was really aimed at Novell four one and earlier. Or or Novell clients that need to log into Novell using IPX, but Novell but Novell five started using T C P IP, so a lot of people didn't have this problem. People are using older version, and that was old back then. And now, now, ten, eight years later, um, <laughs> can you imagine how many people are really using Novell's IPX to log into the network servers? Not many. And so, um, you know, all I can really recommend now to anybody is they're going to use that script, modify it for their own purposes, and if 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 they do that, certainly send the new script back to me I'll look at it and I'll upload it as a newer version but I myself I'm not going to maintain it because I don't want to have to keep changing uh, I've already done the time you know I, I went I, I <laughs> I've already done this ramp but basically I've already uh, made my script and uh, what I would do is I would code it to the best I thought it was working and then I'd do a fresh install and try it again if something went around all different scenarios and I thought it something went wrong then I would if something went wrong then I would change the script to to compensate for it, do, uh, do it for another fresh install and do it again, do it again until finally it worked, uploaded it and the only complaint I had was that one of the binaries wasn't an S bin or, or something, or the user or the opt directory instead of just in the bin directory or something like that, I don't remember but there were no bugs and so you know I've, I've, I've <laughs> Why, why would I have to keep doing things just because SUSE haphazardly decides they're first going to use YUM, they're going to use Zipper, then, you know, 
Fedora is going to use Yum and not After RPM, and you know why aren't they using After RPM anymore? It worked fine. It worked. The thing is that Linux isn't building on its own success, and the development that takes place is disruptive to the to the front end user desktop tools to the extent that they're not in sync with the back end, and so um, or or or. or your system has an old library that the new program needs a newer version of, or you know, all this, this different crazy stuff. It doesn't really all the time, all it, it doesn't work together in a nice oiled machine fashion all the time. And the end result are all these complaints, otherwise, it would work fine. And so, um, that's where I would categorize it rather than bug, bug regression, but you know. He may be thinking things that I'm not even considering right now. So anyway, that that's my talk on on this part. And, um, I'll stop there.